Welcome to Fix It Home Improvement, covering projects that every homeowner should know and great products for home and garden. Hi, I'm JC, and this is where we share weekly home improvement tips. I'm here with my co-host, Cindy. Hello, JC. Hi, Cindy. This week, we're going to be talking about beach tents, canopies, and umbrellas. And we'd like to thank Dieter Markland for liking and sharing the podcast. And we'd also like to thank Mike from the Glow in the Dark radio podcast for promoting our podcast, Mike reads his science fiction stories on his podcast. Some of the first recorded uses of sunshades and umbrellas to block sunlight was in ancient Egypt. Sunshades were used to protect the skin of kings and pharaohs because pale skin was a sign of wealth and power. Hmm. (laughs) Early sunshades were made from papyrus, palm leaves, and bird feathers. What is a beach tent? It's a lightweight, easy-to-assemble and carry tent with an open front. It kind of looks like a half or three-quarters of a camping tent. Okay. The bottom of the tent usually has material to cover the sand while you're inside the tent, and some have material that extends out of the front to provide more area to sit or to store supplies off the sand. Okay. It's used to provide shade, block wind, give you some privacy, and an area to store your belongings. What is a beach canopy? It's primarily a fabric held up by poles or a frame to provide shade. The sides are open. Many will give you more headroom under the fabric for standing or sitting in a chair, but check the height because some are lower and you have to sit on the ground. They're lightweight and easy to assemble like a tent, and a large canopy is also handy for a picnic, backyard parties, or to create a shady area in your backyard for kids or a place to take a nap. (laughs) What is a beach umbrella? It's a large umbrella that's covered with material specifically designed to block UV rays and create shade. And like a rain umbrella, they have one pole supporting the framework that holds the fabric. The pole can have a screw mechanism to anchor it into the sand or a weighted base or a stand. And they're also handy in the backyard to provide shade. Mm Mm-hmm. There's a beach umbrella from the company Sport Brella that sets on an angle. One side of the umbrella top rests against the sand, and then the pole's at an angle, and this has side flaps, so it almost gives you a tent-like structure, but it opens and closes like a traditional umbrella, so it's very easy to set up and take down. It has guy lines with stakes and pockets that can be filled with sand to make sure it stays in place on a windy day. Did you say guy lines? What's that? So it's the cords that are connected to the tent and to stakes in the ground. Guy, G-U-Y, was originally the term used by sailors for ropes used to stabilize parts of a sailboat. Okay. What is a sunshade? It's a general term for something that creates shade. So beach tents, canopies, and umbrellas are all sunshades. Is that what we will be calling this episode then? (laughs) Yes. This will be known as the sunshade episode. (laughs) Great. What are some features you should look for in a beach tent? Look for material that blocks UV rays. The tents I saw all had UV protection, but I would check just to be sure when you're comparing models. Panels or windows for ventilation are a nice feature. Pockets for storage. Mesh pockets allow sand to pass through. Mm -hmm. Hooks or hang holes for hanging wet towels, a radio, or other gear. And how is it anchored? Stakes, guy lines, or stakes and sandbags. With sandbags, how easy are they to fill and empty? I read some reviews on bags that had to be emptied out into the bottom of the tent rather than having an opening away from the tent, which is easier. So it just empties right on the sand. Right. And the more ways it can be anchored, the better it's going to stay in place on a windy day. All right. Is the material water resistant in case it rains to help protect your belongings? Look for any added features for the fabric, like rip or tear-resistant, fade-resistant. Does it have reinforced stitching and zippers? Some tents have fold-up walls for changing clothes or blocking wind and sand. Hmm. Does it have floor mats or flooring? Most beach tents I saw came with a carrying bag, which is a great feature. Check out the weight when it's folded up. I saw quite a few in the 4 to 6 pound range. Okay. What's the height and the overall size? Do you want to be able to use beach chairs inside the tent, 
or is sitting on the ground okay? It's never okay. <laughs> never in sand. Ugh. And how many people will it shade? Hmm. Compare the structure. Pop-up tents, for example, have flexible rods that are connected to the fabric, and they fold up into a circular shape and store in a carrying case. They're usually smaller and lighter and very easy to set up. Most of them will just pop open on their own once they're taken out of the case or a strap is removed. Yeah, oh, nice. Easy. There are dome or pop-open beach tents. These have a hub or umbrella-like structure on top, and that's connected to poles that are connected together in sections. They fold open and they lock in place. Some are called pop-up, right. but this style has to be unfolded. Okay. Some larger tents have rigid poles for the four corners. Some will also have an additional center pole with a top structure for stability. One large beach tent I saw was 10 feet by 10 feet, and the top is 8.5 feet off the sand. They say it will hold around 8 people. It has removable fabric sides and comes with a case that has two wheels on the bottom, so it's very easy to move. And something like this can also be used in the backyard for a party. Okay. How do you anchor a beach tent? Some tents have looped rope at the corners of the tent for stakes that you drive into the sand, and you can use a rubber mallet to drive in the stakes. So you need to bring tools with you? Yes, it's always handy to have a rubber mallet with you. <laughs> but some stakes have a screw end, and they can be screwed into the sand. Many tents will also have sandbags connected to the sides that can be filled with sand to help keep the tent stable on a windy day. And tents can have guy lines that connect to a stake in the sand, and that helps keep the tent secure. Okay. What are some features to look for in a beach canopy? Many canopies have four poles to hold up the top fabric. Some poles are interlocking, some are telescoping. Aluminum and powder-coated steel are durable. Compare the setup and the size when it's in use and when it's folded up. Hmm. A canopy with a folding structure like an umbrella will stand up to heavier winds better than a style with just poles supporting the fabric in four corners, but it's going to be heavier and require a larger carrying case. Right. And compare the weight and the type of storage case it comes with. Compare how it's anchored. Does it require guy lines and stakes or sandbags or both? If you're going to be on a windy beach, the more support you have, the better it is. Right. <laughs> Check that the material blocks UV rays, and is it water-resistant? Okay. Look for extra features for the material, like heavy-duty stitching or rip-resistant, and how much room does it need, if it needs guy lines and stakes? What's the height? Do you want to sit on the ground? Do you want to be in a chair, or do you want to be able to stand up underneath it? How much shade will it provide? Some will list the amount of people that it will shade. Does it have additional fabric to create a wall or two to provide more shade and protection from wind and sand? There are some lightweight styles I saw that only use two poles and four guy lines. You can check out Ziggy Shade, that's Z-I-G-G-Y-S-H-A-D-E, and Nesso, N-E-S-O, they have that style. Mm -hmm. There's a sunshade from Solbello. It's S-O-L-B-E-L-L-O -L -L -O, that just has one T-shaped pole that holds the fabric. And this needs a minimum three mile an hour breeze to extend the fabric and hold it in place. Hmm. So that's pretty interesting. And this comes with a tether kit if there isn't a breeze. Tether, is that a guy line? A guy, exactly. Nice. How do you anchor a beach canopy? Depending on the style, it can use stakes, sandbags, or guy lines. When you're staking guy lines, drive the stake into the sand at about a 45-degree angle with the top of the stake pointing away from the canopy or a tent. Okay. You want guy lines to be snug but not over tight, especially for a tent. You want to have some flexibility in a strong wind. Okay. What features should you look for in a beach umbrella? How big is the umbrella and how much shade will it provide? Compare the structure and the ribs holding the fabric for durability and strength, especially for windy days. Vented umbrellas will help keep the umbrella in place when it's windy. Hmm. A tilt feature lets you adjust the shade. What's the weight and the folded size? Does it come with a carrying case? Some umbrellas have accessories that you can clip to the pole, like hooks for beach towels, cup holders, and trays. Nice. Which is pretty cool. Look for extra features on the fabric, like water-resistant, 
heavy-duty stitching or rip-resistant. Okay. How is a beach umbrella anchored? Many umbrellas have a detachable pole that has a base with a screw end so you can dig into the sand. Some umbrellas just have a pointed end. And the best way to install this type of umbrella is to rock it back and forth, giving it downward pressure. And once you have it deep enough, then rock it back and forth so it's slightly angled into the wind. So the top is pointing into the wind. Okay. And pressure on the top of the umbrella will help keep it in place. All right. Some umbrellas have bags you can fill with sand to anchor the bottom of the pole. Some umbrellas have a stand that you can anchor down with spikes or sandbags. Cool. How many people can be covered by a beach tent? There are small tents that just shade one or two people. Mid-sized tents will shade two to four people. And large tents will shade four to six people. Okay. How many people can be covered by a beach canopy? It's similar to beach tents. There are small canopies that'll shade one or two people, medium that'll shade two to four people, but large canopies can provide a lot more shade than a beach tent, so check the specifications. Okay. What about a beach umbrella? Most umbrellas will provide shade for one to three people, depending on the size. Okay. Can you bring a beach tent, canopy, or umbrella to any beach? Beach tents aren't allowed on all beaches. So no. (laughs) Right. I was on the Virginia Beach website, and tents aren't allowed. Hmm. You have to be able to see through your sunshade on all four sides. Okay. Some beaches don't allow tents or canopies over a certain size because it takes up too much space, it blocks people's view of the water, and it can reduce visibility for lifeguards. Okay. The Myrtle Beach website says non-umbrellas measuring less than 12 feet by 12 feet are welcome nine months out of the year. (laughs) Umbrella use begins Memorial Day and ends the day after Labor Day. During that time, only umbrellas measuring up to seven and a half feet in diameter are allowed. So you should check the beach you're going to be going to to find out what type of restrictions they have. Before. Right, before you go. (laughs) What color beach tent, canopy, or umbrella should you pick for the best UV protection? Darker colors absorb more light and heat. Lighter colors reflect more UV radiation, reducing the UV rays that pass through the material. But more important than color is the UPF rating. What is the UPF rating? UPF is the ultraviolet protection factor. It's a numbered scale that indicates the level of protection from UVA and UVB rays. UPF from 15 to 24 is considered good. UPF from 25 to 39 is considered very good. UPF from 40 to 50 has excellent protection. UPF 50 blocks 98% of UV rays. Okay. UVA and UVB are just different wavelengths, and both can damage your skin. The Skin Cancer Foundation says use sunshades, clothing, sunglasses, and sunscreen to prevent a sunburn. Sunburns will accelerate skin aging, and it's the leading cause of the deadliest form of skin cancer. Mm -hmm. They say your risk of skin cancer doubles if you have five or more sunburns. Wow. What materials are beach tents, canopies, and umbrellas made from? Polyester, nylon, and polyethylene are common for many beach tents and canopies. They're durable, water-resistant, and UV-resistant, and many of these are treated with a coating to improve their UV and water resistance. All right. How do you clean them? REI recommends cleaning your sunshade at least once a season. Use cold water and a mild non-detergent dish soap and a sponge to clean any soiled areas. Don't use harsh soaps, bleach, spot removers, or laundry pre-soak products. Many soaps are perfumed, which can attract insects or rodents, depending on where you store your sunshade as well. (laughs) So they recommend using unscented soap, and after using soap, rinse it thoroughly and allow it to completely dry. Damp fabrics can grow mildew, which has a bad smell, and it can damage some of the coatings. But check the maintenance instructions for your specific fabric. Some companies have a unique fabric and care instructions. Okay. How do you store them? For most sunshades, at the end of the season, you should clean it and allow it to fully dry, then fold it according to the manufacturer's instructions. 
The process may vary depending on the design. Mm -hmm. Many companies recommend packing it into the carrying case or the storage bag that it comes with. Store the bag in a cool, dry location and don't store items on top of the bag. If your sunshade didn't come with a case, use a duffel bag or a storage container with a lid to protect it. Okay. What are some top-rated beach tent companies? Pacific Breeze, Coleman, Wolfwise, it's W-O-L-F-W-I-S-E, Helinox, H-E-L-I-N-O-X, Oniva, it's O-N-I-V-A, and Lightspeed. What are some top-rated beach canopy companies? Coleman, Lightspeed, Sun Ninja, Shibumi, S-H-I-B-U-M-I, and Sobello, S-O-L-B-E-L-L-O. What are some top-rated beach umbrella companies? Beach Bub, it's B-E-A-C-H, capital B-U-B, Tommy Bahama, Wondershade, and Sportbrella. It's S-P-O-R-T, capital B-R-E-L-L-A. Cool. Do you have anything else to add? I think that's a pretty good overview, and I would check out some of these styles online because there is quite a variety. Cool. Let's wrap this up. You can subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast app. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a review. You can check out our home improvement videos on our YouTube channel, Fix It Home Improvement. And you can subscribe to that as well. You can download our ebooks, Home Improvement Solutions, What Every Homeowner Should Know, books 1 through 17 on Amazon. If you enjoyed it, please leave us a five-star rating and review. You can email us at fixitpodcast at gmail.com. You can follow Cindy on Twitter at fixitcohost. And you can follow us on Instagram, fixithomeimprovement. Thank you for listening. Talk to you next week.